everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the misconceptions of macOS security. Thanks for joining us. As everyone is getting settled, let me get a few things out of the way. First, please think of questions throughout the webinar and direct them to the Q&A section. I'll be leaving some time to answer them at the end. If we don't get to all of your questions today, we'll follow up with you afterward. Reaching out to info at jamf.com will also get you in contact with someone at Jamf quickly. Second, this webinar will be recorded, and we will share the recording with you shortly after the webinar is finished. Welcome to today's webinar, Misconceptions of Mac OS Security. My name is Ana Menzer Hernandez, and I'm an Information Security Engineer at Jamf. Prior to Jamf, I was a Jamf admin myself in a highly secure environment, and used Jamf primarily as a security tool to manage and keep our Macs safe and compliant. At Jamf, I focus entirely on keeping Jamf and our customers safe. Let's start with a quick look at the agenda. First, an overview of macOS misconceptions. Second, how to understand the current state of macOS security. Third, I'll identify the different modern tools and resources that can help you to better manage your Macs. And then I'll finish with how to leverage software to secure endpoints, data, and your users. While this webinar will be relatively high level, I'm going to make sure that you have lots of launching points and resources by the end so that you can do your own exploration later. Let's go ahead and get started. First, a little about who we are here at Jamf. Jamf Solutions are here to help organizations connect, manage, and protect Apple devices. In today's webinar, we will dive into challenges one might face when it comes to securely connecting users to resources, managing devices and apps, and protecting data and privacy. Our mission is to help organizations succeed with Apple. This focus allows us to provide the best-in-class product for organizations to manage their Apple technology. Jamf helps more than 57,000 organizations manage more than 25 million Apple devices and counting. In fact, some of the world's largest banks, tech developers, brands, and companies choose Jamf. And now let's get some of those Mac misconceptions out on the table. Does anyone here remember the I'm a Mac commercial where PC shows up in the biohazard suit? He's having problems hearing Mac because of the suit. You can't take it off because of the PC virus that everyone is getting. You wouldn't understand. You don't have to deal with this stuff, Mac, he says. And this was true in the Halcyon days of 2006. With this in mind, let's look to 2021, where Craig Federighi, Apple's senior vice president of software engineering, said in court that today we have a level of malware on the Mac that we don't find acceptable. With Apple's popularity skyrocketing and widespread adoption of Mac and the enterprise, coupled with remote and hybrid work initiatives, organizations have no choice but to take a hard look at their security practices. It's no longer enough to make things available and convenient. We must also keep our end users protected against security threats. Macs are now susceptible to phishing attacks, malware, ransomware, and unmanaged changes like shadow IT. And let's quickly discuss the state of Mac security. In a recent survey, we asked respondents, specifically security personnel, about their Mac and non-Mac users. Respondents said that they expect a 74% increase in Mac-dominant environments. This can be the sheer growth of a company who already uses Mac or need more devices with employees who are now working from anywhere. But either way, it's a testament to the benefits being seen with Mac in the enterprise and education systems. The 65% increase in primarily non-Mac organizations is really interesting. I tend to think that this has a lot to do with the end user experience that drives the demand for a Mac, which is great to see because we also received from the survey that 71% of total people polled said that their Macs deliver a better end user experience. 77% of security professionals view Mac as more secure out of the box than non-Mac devices. Based on the survey, 79% of primarily Mac environments say that security reputation influences purchasing decision, while 57% answer the same way for non-Mac environments. We know that the Mac's reputation, where security is concerned, is being accounted for. There are a lot of considerations when displacing PCs, like third-party compatibility, cost of life cycle for a Mac, so it makes sense that security is more of an influential decision in purchasing for Mac environments, and I would have to assume that it has to do with results in either having fewer attacks that are known, or perhaps having fewer severe attacks. Mac users roll out security patches 30% faster and major OS updates two and a half times faster than non-Mac environments. Delaying rollouts of patches introduces serious risks. Attackers can leverage the knowledge from patches to build effective attacks for unpatched systems. Mac admins are good at rolling out patches, but we still need to do better as an industry. Reducing the time between when a patch is announced and when it is deployed can significantly reduce the attack surface of a fleet. An advantage of Mac 
is that the native security tools receive silent automatic updates. So as long as those updates are enabled, a user benefits from updated known bad lists native to Mac without having to receive an upgrade or to deal with any compatibility issues. What delays OS update rollouts? Compatibility testing, security tool compatibility, internal application compatibility, compliance requirements, third-party compatibility. Finding the right balance between testing and speed is key. Compatibility testing is a core need to ensure smooth operation of an organization. However, it tends to scale with the complexity of the environment. Security tools often have deep hooks into the OS. This can cause issues during OS updates, and not all vendors can update their tools, can validate them, and can ship them quickly. Deploying security tools should never be the reason that your environment is not secure. What are the biggest concerns to security incident remediation? Unknown threats, time, staff, tools, and money. Much of the focus in malware research is on Windows. As a result, the attacks that are performed against Macs are often less known and staff tasked with remediation are less aware of what the impact of any one security threat is or was. To make matters difficult, many security tools fall into one of two extremes on Macs. They find that very little actually affects the Mac, such as Windows malware, or they utilize a machine learning approach that tells the analyst that something is wrong without telling them why something is wrong or what is wrong or where it's wrong. And without great expertise, these kinds of alerts are easily dismissed as false positives. Where organizations are investing, DLP, antivirus, EDR, SIMS, and CASB. With a much more distributed workforce and less reliance on internal networks, it makes sense that more folks are looking at ways to control data flow. Much of that work still requires resource intensive approaches to identify whether valuable data has left, but we're still seeing more and more organizations transition to a more generic flow control approach, such as blocking or limiting external media, blocking or limiting cloud services, Misconfigured or uninventoried cloud data storage has been a major issue for organizations, so a focus on spending more money here is right in line with the trends that we're seeing. Given that more and more devices are running in unsecured networks and where they may be exposed to consumer hardware, where security is not the priority, organizations have to focus more on basic protections against malware and attackers looking to jump from that smart light switch to an employee's work device. Stronger and more effective AV and EDR tools are key to this. As security teams encounter active attacks, they'll also be faced with the challenge of isolating compromised machines and cleaning them up. On Macs, it's been difficult historically, which explains why organizations may be looking at further investing in EDR tools. As Jamf, we've been helping organizations manage their Apple devices for a long time. With the tools that we provide our customers, we try very hard to ensure that they can diagnose malicious attacks and remediate them remotely without major disruptions to the end users even if that requires redeploying macOS to a device without it leaving the end user's house. Now let's talk about securing our assets, our data, and our users. What is protected then? macOS security isn't the icing on the cake. It's baked right into the cake. It's in the recipe. It isn't obnoxious though, so you probably forget about most of it. Let's dive into what's included just out of the box. First, let's look at malware protection, which Apple has baked into a three-layer cake. Preventing the malware from launching, we've got the App Store, Gatekeeper, and App Notarization. Blocking the malware from running, we have Gatekeeper, Notarization, and XProtect. And reversing the damage done by malware that has managed to run falls on MRT. XProtect and MRT are often updated, quietly, and separately from the macOS software updates. And speaking of which, macOS software updates are absolutely crucial to keeping your fleet secure. Same-day support for new major releases is not just important to your security. Admins need access to the features and the workflows, and the end users want the shiny new toys too. This expectation of support should extend not only to your IT staff and policies, but also to your vendors. Speak to your vendors about their beta programs and get enrolled. Test those new features and be ready on launch day. We host our beta program on Jamf Nation if you're interested. Jamf is proud to have same-day support for all of our products. You could write an entire webinar on the built-in software security features of macOS, but we just don't have time for a deep dive into all of them. Instead, here are some quick bits of info about a few of the more integral features. System integrity protection builds protections around parts of the operating system, restricting even the root account from modifying important system files often targeted by malicious actors or clueless ones. 
FileVault offers full disk encryption, protecting your data at rest. FileVault utilizes the T2 security chip and Apple Silicon chip to directly leverage Secure Enclave for secured cryptographic operations. Secure Enclave moves us into Apple's hardware protections. And now it's time to get more technical because more secure hardware means more secure software. VM1 chip is Apple's silicon on a chip that makes up the guts of the newest MacBook Pro, iMac, and iPad. Small but very powerful, the self-contained hardware allows Apple not only to make lighter and more efficient devices with a longer battery life, but it also grants Apple more control over how the hardware and software integrate for overall control of a device's security from design to implementation. A subset of the M1 chip, the Secure Enclave runs independently to the main processor and is used to validate hardware root of trust, generate encryption keys, and protected memory. By design, this operates isolated from other system processes, meaning that your sensitive user data remains safeguarded even if the application processor kernel becomes compromised. In lay terms, the Secure Enclave is dedicated to keeping the basic system and your sensitive user data secured, even if the rest of your system is not. The most recognizable part of the Secure Enclave is how it handles device security, namely Touch ID and Face ID. Biometric data, such as fingerprints or face scans, are handled by the Secure Enclave on behalf of the M1 to keep your data safe. Let's look at how a malicious file might make its way through the OS. First, macOS scans the file to see if it's notarized. Developers submit apps to Apple, who scans them for malware and notarizes those they find clean and issues a ticket like a clean bill of health. They can revoke that bill of health if an app starts acting shady, passing that information to Gatekeeper, who will then block that app from launching. XProtect uses Yara signatures to detect malware signatures, detecting and blocking the execution of known malware. XProtect keeps a constant watch on the app, too. It checks when the file is first launched, when it has been changed, and when the signatures are updated by Apple. MRT is the malware removal tool, an engine built into macOS that blocks known malware. It updates silently and was used, for example, to block a vulnerable component in Zoom in 2019. Next, I'd like to tackle the concept of regulatory frameworks. It's a common misconception that Macs don't need to be held to the same standards that PCs are or that the same standards somehow don't exist. There's a lot of confusion around deciding which frameworks are required or recommended and how to use them. So let's dive in. There are governing bodies who provide recommendations on different types of endpoint and server settings and data management, and they're often prescriptive. You can think of them as best practices. Some of these frameworks exist to keep a specific industry safe, such as the frequently misunderstood HIPAA. These exist primarily to provide a standard approach to security. I'd like to talk about a few of these companies that you should know. The MITRE ATT&CK framework is a tool for security teams to understand which kinds of attacks are being used frequently and to understand which systems are most vulnerable to those attacks. Those attacks, such as privilege escalation, lateral movement, or credential access, are organized on their website and can be used to understand which kinds of threats are out there. This can help security operation centers, or SOCs, to detect and analyze more appropriately and can help them to prioritize. A great way to tear down the Macs don't get malware argument is to take a close look at their Mac OS matrix. Drilling down into their techniques a little further will show you examples of different types of malware, ways to detect it, and also ways to mitigate it. This framework should be familiar to any individual in information security, and it can be useful when working with a security team unfamiliar with Macs to be able to dive into something familiar and trusted. Next, let's take a quick look at the CIS benchmarks. These are more prescriptive and offer guidance on specific configurations. If you are only just looking at ways to secure your fleet and best practices, these benchmarks are free to download and offer excellent explanations of why each configuration is necessary. One configuration might be, for example, a timeout interval for a screensaver. Allowing a user to disable the screensaver or the lock needed to wake the computer would have an enormous impact if the laptop were stolen. The benchmarks will tell you not only how long it is recommended to configure the timeout setting, but also how to do it. These benchmarks exist for all kinds of environments, from PCs to AWS to different Linux distros. It can be a useful way to start thinking about what compliance means for your organization, even though some may be too strict and some may not be strict enough, depending on your industry. Similar to the CIS benchmarks is the National Institute of Security and Technology, or NIST. 
They've historically shared some overlap, but currently NIST for macOS is a joint effort between a favorite project of mine called the macOS Security Compliance Project. They still maintain checklists for compliance, but this joint effort is between NIST, NASA, DISA, and Los Alamos National Lab. This extremely cool project does a great job of getting systems into a safe state very quickly and is designed to use with an MDM. Historically speaking, when new versions of an operating system are released, there have been several months waiting for new guidelines and recommendations to be released. And this project is built to be flexible enough that a new OS can be rolled out the same day it's released. This is extremely important, as administrators need to be able to implement all of the patches and new security features that the new operating system provides. The macOS security project maps to several different US federal guides and can be found on GitHub. Let's touch first on Jamf Protect and Compliance Reporter. These two applications work to provide comprehensive endpoint protection for macOS and robust auditing and compliance checks based on the security frameworks of the macOS security compliance project. Compliance Reporter assists businesses with meeting or exceeding compliance and auditing requirements. It forwards that data to your SIM or to your data lake in real time. Jamf Protect keeps devices safe by actively scanning for and preventing known malware automatically. In the event of unknown threats like a zero-day attack, behavioral analytics are used to detect these anomalies so that admins can act on them before they develop into something far worse, with each analytic mapping directly to the MITRE attack framework that we discussed earlier. For example, if a new malware uses a launch agent to maintain persistence through reboots and normal computer usage, it can be invisible and hard to detect. Jamf Protect has an analytic that watches directories and files for many different ways in which this can be achieved and will alert the admin if one is discovered. Jamf Threat Labs works constantly to build new analytics against behaviors that threat actors are using. In December of 2021, when the LogForge or Log4j vulnerability was discovered, the team quickly built an analytic to monitor suspicious Java activity. Additionally, Jamf Protect has mappings to the CIS benchmarks and can be used to give you insights into your overall compliance as well. The third piece I'd like to talk about is Jamf Connect. It allows you to utilize your cloud identity provider to create accounts, authenticate, and synchronize passwords on your Mac. This gives the security team the ability to track user information to a device, to control what type of authentication is required, like biometrics, and can enforce MFA. Jamf Connect takes a lot of the pressure off of help desks and admins by syncing passwords, but it is equally important for a security team. The number one security problem for organizations today is stolen login credentials. Syncing user passwords with Okta or Azure, among others, is helpful. But Jamf Connect can allow even for passwordless authentication using Jamf Unlock. This allows users to utilize Touch ID or Face ID on their mobile device to unlock a computer. Even if the user's password is compromised, the IDP would be able to track logins and leave a trail. The more remote the world becomes, the more important it is to be able to track things from afar. When the agency I worked for needed more control over Mac management, we tried a lot of different tools. We landed on Jamf Pro as our primary Apple enterprise management tool, and we used it to keep all of our Macs in a compliant state. From a security standpoint, it can be used to enforce baseline configurations, to view reports, to restrict malicious software, integrate with Microsoft's conditional access, Cisco ICE, and others. Each member of the security team could audit our Jamf Pro server and build their own customized dashboards to get a quick look at the health of our fleet without even having to dive in. Jamf Pro can also be configured to run and email reports on a schedule. This means fewer calls to the admin, which was me, requesting information, and it minimized disruptions in my day. The ability to get in and explore also helped them to ask better questions and for us to have better conversations. Our products work seamlessly together for remediation too. When Jamf Protect gets an alert, Jamf Pro can be configured to perform a remediation activity on that endpoint. Jamf Protect will quarantine a suspicious file and remediation with Jamf Pro could look like deleting a suspicious application or taking a computer offline until an analysis can be conducted or restricting access to company resources until the device is once again in a compliant state. Let's look at some tools and resources next. To wrap, I'd like to offer a few of my favorite macOS security resources. The Apple Platform Security Guide is on Apple's website. It's an easily searchable guide to all things macOS security. It explains the different technologies, hardware and software, and how they interact. For a deeper dive into malware, Patrick Wardle's Art of Mac Malware is available on his website and it covers the tools and techniques necessary to analyze Mac malware and to better understand it. 
I understand it's also going to be released in a hard copy later this year. Jaron Bradley's OS 10 Incident Response Book explains the mechanisms behind the Yara rules that XProtect and Jamf Protect use to identify malware, but it's also a very easily digestible introduction to a security professional who's unfamiliar with Macs. And lastly, for those of you who prefer in-person instruction, JNUC or the Jamf Nation User Conference now includes a security chat. Those videos are also available on YouTube for free if you miss the conference. Patrick Wardle's cleverly named Objective by the Sea is the first security conference for macOS and is located conveniently in surfing locations like Monaco or Maui. And lastly, for a four-day deep dive into the topics we've covered here today and so much more, look up the Jamf 370 certification course. It also includes an optional Jamf Endpoint Security Admin certification. Taking the Jamf 370 course does have prerequisites, but it's safe to say that you'll have a good handle on not just Mac security in general, but also on using Jamf's products in particular to stay safe.